What's good, YouTube, man? Hope everybody's having a great day. It's Gay Root to Hood Fan TV. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all the videos. And we got to talk about the fact that the narrative surrounding Lamar Jackson has gone just a little bit, maybe a lot of it, too far, all right? Concerning his, his play over the last couple years and whether or not he's injury prone, okay? Now, let's, let's start with his play. I've seen um, somebody put on Twitter, right? that Lamar Jackson's level of play has been league average over the last couple of years. Um, if you look at EPA by, by play and all these kind of stats like this, right? Now, listen, I will never be the guy to tell you that stats don't have meaning, don't have value. Of course they do. But it's all about context and how you apply them. We cannot simply be people who watch the box scores of a game and say, hey, look, this is what happened, so he's not good anymore. Can't do that, all right? After 2019, Lamar Jackson had an historic season in 2019, all right? 2020, he was still good. Um, offense was up and down, whatever. 2021 is the season I look at where I know people are just watching the box scores because if you watch Lamar Jackson play in 2021, he was fantastic throwing the football, all right? Now, he only played 12 games, got hurt, okay? We'll talk about that too. But he played those 12 games, had 2,800 yards, I think a 17 touchdowns, somewhere around there. So he's on pace to throw for his first ever 4,000-yard season, have 30-plus touchdowns, while all while simultaneously leading the most injured team in NFL history to the playoffs. Because we cannot forget, during that season, there was a point in time where the Ravens were the one seed, all right? Lamar Jackson has been winning since he came to the NFL. I know people are going to say, well, QB wins aren't really a quarterback stat, this and that. Of course, teams are, are worse when their backup quarterback is in the game. And that's fine. I, 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 hey, you can say what you want to say about that. But it doesn't take away from the, from the fact that no matter how much we try to say about Tyler Huntley, the Ravens are simply not the same team without Lamar Jackson on the field. Okay. Now, in 2021, like I was saying, this team was severely injured, right? He was throwing the ball. He was literally carrying the team on the back. That's, that's the year of the Colts game and other games like that, where it looked like sometimes he was a man on a mission by himself. All right. Simply put, Lamar Jackson had probably would have had another MVP type season that year if he finishes the year. Okay. 4,000 yards, 30 plus touchdowns, still doing what he does on the ground, leading a team, like I said, with the most injuries in history to the playoffs. It was all happening. Then he got hurt inside the pocket. Okay. All right. You come back to last season. Last season was more up and down. It, 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 it was. But the first four weeks of the year, we saw the best of Lamar Jackson. We saw when the offense opened up and the fact that he could throw the ball all over the yard. So this idea of league average play, he's never developed as a passer. He peaked in 2019. None of it truly makes sense if you actually watch the games and not the box score. That's why the narrative around Lamar Jackson is really um, it's unfortunate because there's a lot of fans running with whatever the media is saying, whatever this um, the data points in the analytics say. And like I said previously, those things have a place in football, but you got to use them properly. You can't just sit out there and just watch the box score and say, hey, look, this was a bad game. You can't do that. You cannot do that. Another thing I saw on Twitter, a video, um, I think his name is Steven Ruiz. If I got that wrong, let me know. But he's like a popular uh, football guy on Twitter, whatever. He did Lamar Jackson's last full game. He put up all the throws, It was the which is the Jaguars game, which is the last full game he played. You might look at that box score and say Lamar Jackson was off a little bit or whatever. But when you watch the game, watch the throws, numerous drop passes. There were, I believe, three drop touchdown passes in that game. Lamar Jackson finishes with one touchdown pass. He should have finished with four. The Ravens lose the game by one, a game that should have been a blowout because of that. Okay? That's why you cannot watch the box score and say, this is what happened in this game. It doesn't work like that. It just doesn't work like that. So when I see things like, yeah, well, teams are hesitant because, you know, Lamar Jackson has been league average. And they don't want to invest the money in a guy who hasn't been that good since 2019. You're not watching the games. All right. Another thing. He's injury prone. OK, he's missed the last two years, five games, I believe, in the last two years, five games each of the last two seasons. So or maybe it might have been six this, this past year, whatever it is. OK, um, the fact of the matter is he got hurt in the pocket. All right. I've seen Joe Burrow turn his ACL in the pocket. Uh, I've seen Deshaun Watson tear his ACL in the pocket. I've seen um, Justin Herbert. I believe he has some type of shoulder injuries. I'm not 100% sure on that. Or No, Justin Herbert had a rib injury. I know that for sure. He definitely had a rib injury in the pocket. Okay? These injuries can happen to quarterbacks when they get hit. 
All right. It's nothing to do with his style of play being conducive to injuries. And um, this whole style of play thing is a um, is a cold word for saying that he's a guy who likes to run around, which Lamar Jackson, if you watch the games, doesn't do that. When it's a pass play, he's standing up tall in the pocket, getting from one to three every single time. The first reason open, he's hitting them. But if other guys, he working the progression every time I got like your standard NFL quarterback. All right. Then you got guys, you got teams, right? I'd rather the NFL teams just come out and say, hey, look, man, it's just the money. You know, we don't want to give out guaranteed deals. There's only one team has said that, right? And that's um, that's the Colts. Jim Irsay flat out said, I don't believe in guaranteed contracts. Well, fully guaranteed contracts. I don't believe in it. Cool. Now, Lamar Jackson has said that he's never really asked for a fully guaranteed deal. We've had that whole story, so I'm not getting back into that. But Jim Irsay flat out said, I don't believe in those kind of deals. All right, cool. Thank you. Thank you for being honest. But Arthur Smith, right? Owner of the Atlanta Falcons saying that, well, his style of play, his injury history, it makes it too risky for us. When you got a quarterback on your roster who tore his ACL, sorry, not sorry, not not, not on your roster, I'm sorry. You had a quarterback who you were pursuing last offseason in Deshaun Watson who tore his ACL in college and then tore his ACL again in the NFL, right? Not to mention everything that off the field happened with Deshaun Watson. Whatever you want to believe about what happened, he had 27 cases on him. Whatever you want to believe about what happened with the cases, I'm not here to discuss that. The fact of the matter is, he had 27 cases on him, maybe more that, that, that didn't come out, okay? You were in full pursuit of that guy, in full pursuit, all right? The commanders, right? Ron, Ron Rivera says, yeah, no, we're not really looking to get into the quarterback market. We have Sam Howell and Jacoby Brissett. So you have Sam Howell, who's played one game, fifth-round draft pick, right? He could be a good player. But you're playing a lot of, you know, Lamar Jackson is a good player. You have Jacoby Brissett, who is nothing but a bridge stopgap quarterback. If he was to be your guy, it was going to be for one year, maybe two, at the max. At the max, right? Now, who knows what Dan Snyder would do? He could offer Lamar Jackson a contract, sell the team, because the, um, the commanders are getting bids from multiple people who want to buy the team, right? Who knows, right? You, you can't really count anything out when it comes to him. Then you got the Lions. The Lions say, uh, Dan Campbell, who I like Dan Campbell, right? Um, I got family who are in the in the Flint area. They 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 love the Lions. It's an exciting team coming up. Okay, great. He says, "Oh man, thank God we got Jared Goff." And it's <laughs> and it's funny when you hear those words. Thank God we got Jared Goff in comparison to Lamar Jackson. The NFL owners are showing solidarity in this moment, and they're saying that we're just not going to pay the guy the money that he wants. Send out. This fight is, is as simple as that, okay? I just kind of wish that that would be the narrative, that we think he wants too much money. Instead, we're getting things like league average play and injury history, things that could easily be debunked if you just look into it. Things that don't make sense once you really look into it. Um, also, right, the fact that... I'm oh, sorry, it's my turn. So I think um, also what's hurting Lamar Jackson is pre-draft biases that are still there. I think teams believe that by year five, year six in the league, that Lamar Jackson would have washed out. So they're feeling as though, hey, look, man, maybe this is it for this guy. And, you know, hey, look, we're right. We're not going to get in on it because we believe we never believed him in the first place. Honestly, that's, I think that's hurting them as well. Um, also, when you hear these people talk about Lamar Jackson, they say things like, we, oh, well, we know we got to create a whole new offense for Lamar Jackson. And this is strictly because of Gray Run was wing T, triple option offense. Um, has done damage to the reputation of how people view Lamar as a football player. I want to go back to 2021 when everybody was hurt, when all the running backs went down, when we was literally signing the running backs off the street. Hey, you 30 plus years old in a running back, you could be in the Ravens backfield. The Ravens had an effective running game simply because they had Lamar Jackson back there. Simply because of that. Okay, great. The passing game, Greg Roman was actually forced to open up his playbook and throw the football. And he did that. That season, the Ravens were, I believe, 55-45 passing. They were an overwhelmingly passing team that year, okay? Which is which is high for Greg Roman, right? And that might, might not be high for other teams, but that's high for Greg Roman. Lamar Jackson delivered that year. He delivered, right? Hollywood only finished with like 1,000 yards that year. But if Lamar Jackson stays healthy, Hollywood's going to get 12, 1,400 yards that season just because of how well Lamar Jackson was playing and Hollywood was getting better as a player too. But... Simple as that. He was showing that I can play in a pass heavier offense. I can do this. 
He showed it in college. Bobby Petrino, we've said this many, many times, is a pro-style uh, offensive system. He does not look for guys who just run the college offense. That's not what he wants. Did he do things to help Lamar Jackson by adding in some re after stuff? Of course, because you're not going to use one of his greatest assets. Why would you not use that? Of course you're going to do that. But when it came to the passing aspect of it, it's pro style. Lamar has to set himself. The biggest adjustment that when he came to the NFL was simply the verbiage, right? Because in college, they use hand signals. In the league, it's all long, 10-letter play, 10-letter words, excuse me, 10-letter sentences for, for, for one play, right? So that's he said that was his biggest adjustment. So the narrative has gone too far for Lamar Jackson, all right? He hasn't been league average. If you look at what the Ravens have asked him to do, he's been one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Stop bringing up passing yards to me when you talk about Lamar Jackson. Stop doing that, all right? Simply put, how can he have high pass numbers in an offense where the where the coordinator doesn't want to pass the ball? The one year the coordinator let him loose and really throw the football, 2021, he was showing up and showing out. He was an MVP candidate that season. You can look it up. He was, it was there. The Ravens were winning games that year. When everybody thought the Ravens were done, everybody was feeling terrible for the Ravens. Wow, all of these injuries, man. So It's so sad, so bad for this team. I guess just chalk it up next season. We'll, we'll, we'll double back with the Ravens next year. No, they were still winning football games. And this is with a bad offensive line, too. Andrew Hollow, uh, Villaweva getting blown by. Okay? So, <laughs> Lamar Jackson comes to your team. He brings winning. Simple as that. He did it in college. He's done it in the pros. After after he left Louisville, they went like oh, they went like two and eight the next season. Bobby Petrino got fired. Okay, Lamar Jackson is a winner. He brings winning. If it was truly about winning, the, these teams would be ready to pay. But it's not about winning. It's about not giving a high dollar amount to these players and trying to keep trying to push down the guaranteed money uh, for as long as they can. That's simply what it's about. Um, but. I just want to make this video saying that Lamar Jackson has gone too far. He's an elite player. He's a great quarterback. He's kind of guy that your team should want to build around. And if your team does it, that's on them. All right. Uh, but I'm going to get out of here, man. It's Gabriel. This is another fan TV. I'm out.